picture. When they click the edit button, we get a little dialog box like this, prompting them just for the information that they need in order to make that update on that module. Imagine also in the restaurant that they want to update some of the uh, event information. It's maybe they aren't changing the information, but they want to change the way it's being displayed. For instance, on the, the call out date information, maybe not, they don't always want to say the next item here, but they got this really big thing coming up in two weeks and they want to be able to tag it and force that one to the top. So by going like before, they'd be able to see an edit button, they'd click, and they'd have just the options. They want to show the next, they want to show a summary on this or not. Do they want to uh, go get to the next one or get the next one by tag or show both? And what is the tag they're going to use? Something very simple and very basic and intuitive for a non-technical user. Say they want to look at the different uh, listing of events coming up, same thing. They have an edit button here. By clicking on the edit button, a little dialog box pops up, and they can change just the details that matter, like the account, the category, the date range, the format in the month, day and month. Um, all, they want to link the titles, all those sorts of things. Let's say you have another employee, and this employee doesn't have the same privileges. With this employee, when this one clicks, gets a very a subset of what we saw previously based upon that, particular, that person's particular assignment to a role. In this case, he can turn on and off link titles, whether you want to show the number of hits per item, and whether or not you're showing intro text. Modules with permissions and front end editing. I try to show you just an idea of what I think it is and what it involves. I'm with Randy Carey from the States. Uh, I w work uh, developing websites for different clients and also I'm trying to shift more to the development area under the IQ project where the idea is to make improve the CMS user experience. That's where the ICUE comes from, improve the CMS user experience. So we give our clients a user experience that's easier than what we use as a developer, give them more of a streamlined back end. And, and I've listed several different ways that we can improve the user experience. And in this particular talk, we're focusing mostly on the front end editing, role based ACL, a little bit of that as well. So I've already shown you the imagine section. Imagine what it front end editing should be like for modules. And let me also give a footnote that I know that on the previous talk, they said that they're talking about adding some module editing and that sort of thing in Joomla. This is my own uh, project I spun off and worked. These are my own ideas. I don't know if the, if the regular Joomla project is thinking particularly how they're going to do it yet, just that they want to. So just realize that this is my own uh, view and implementation of how I do it. I want to give a little bit of presentation on front end editing, the philosophy of it, why it has value, and what things maybe shouldn't belong in the front end editing. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about ACL and permissions because if we do front end editing, we have to set up permissions to say who actually can edit the modules. Uh, how are modules different from components? They are different, and that means the way we edit on the front end is going to be different than the way we edit components on the front end. Um, and when we set up uh, per permissions, there's things they call actions, and modules have their settings. And we have to set up things like, you know, what, what instead of create, edit, delete, we might have formatting or display or, or list settings that goes to each module. And how do we tie them to the different fields that we uh, allow? And which fields do we want to pr provide on the front end? I'll give a quick demo on uh, how to um, implement this. And I, the code I thought when I came here was going to be something really short and simple. It turned out it took a lot of work to get this to done. So I don't have it all completed. And uh, I will, if you go to the iqproject.com, just sign up here on the side. And uh, I'm just, it's not a spam list. I just want to basically give you information. And this is the project I'm working on. And here you can download this code. It's available now, that sort of thing. And at the end, I'll give a quick little demonstration. I don't have a lot of time, but I'll try to squeeze it in. Um, one thing I wanted to start out though before I uh, go into the next phase is I gave this presentation, I proposed this presentation in the middle of April to, for JAB and got accepted. And back when I've been giving presentations on ACL and role-based ACL, I used this diagram to explain the ACL. And I say, if you notice, look at um, everything uses access levels. You've got the components, the modules, the menu items, the plugins, they all refer to access levels. But when it comes time to permissions, only compo components use permissions. Modules could use permissions, but they don't. And it's true, they, they don't. And I thought it'd be rather easy. So I thought I'll put together a presentation showing how you can use permissions on modules and how you can apply them, for instance, for an, an editing. 
after I got my proposal accepted, I started doing the work and realized Joomla Core does not anticipate that modules will be edited anywhere besides Module Manager. And it didn't try to stop me from doing it, but all the things it does to help have ACL implemented and forms implemented for components, those things just aren't there for modules. So I had to do a lot of extra work around and code around. It took more work than I thought it was going to to get to the point I got to. But I did get there. Uh, I just need to do a little more testing before I'm able to release it. So front end editing, I think it's a little philosophy on this. We have to realize that we as developers and site implementers realize all the parts that go behind a CMS. The templates, the components, plugins, and what they do and how they, how they interact. But we, the people who use our websites, who commission it, those people who maintain the content, they, have, they realize it as a series of pages or as a particular page with different parts on it. What we do quite often is we impose upon them, in order to manage this website, you have to understand what we understand. And that's more complicated than they probably need to know. If we realize that the users approach a website based upon the visual mental model of that front end, and we can, ma we can map a lot of the editing to that, we've made their job a lot easier and more intuitive. We've built a much better product. If we, could think of the, if we get them to think of it in terms of pages and parts on pages. On the front end, we already have editing of components that falls right in place of the component and sets it in, but we don't have it for modules yet. It'd be nice if we could have somebody go in and edit things like, what items am I going to put in a rotation and what text do I put in with that? Um, a list, what items I want to put in this list? Do I want to turn on feature? Do I want to change the category? Those sorts of things. And all the different callouts. All these are modules. It would be nice if they could just click on those. And this is my view of what front end editing should be like. Um, this, uh, this restaurant, for instance, is like you want to change the contact information. You log in. If the person has rights, there's a little icon. They can click on it and edit that information. They can click on and edit the lead in information for this particular menu. And maybe the person only is going to be changing prices. We're going to manage the menu somewhere else, the, the different items in it. But as far as changing prices, they get a list here, and they can click here and change just those particular prices. That's the way it should be. I'm not saying we're there yet. But this is, a, in my view, the most intuitive way we can deliver it to our clients. So one of the questions to be begged to be asked is, if we can edit anything on the front end, should we be editing everything on the front end? I tend to say no. And I know there's a, this drive to merge things, the front end and the back end together. I tend to think that we at least need to have an administrative dashboard or view that's different from the front end editing. So let me just look and compare a couple of things. The first thing is when we want to look at the front end page, we look at the different module positions. Those work really well for editing in the front end because it matches the user's mental model of the website. I want to edit this, I click a little button there. I want to edit this list, I click a little button there, and there's the information. But let's talk about things like lists. If we have articles or testimonials or events, when we're going to be able to make them published or we're going to make them featured or we want to categorize them or order them within a category, that's having a forest view instead of a view of an individual item. And I think those things belong in a list something like this, probably in the back end or if in the front end, at least a different dashboard that doesn't necessarily tie to the front of a particular item. We have applications like a store when you manage customers or products and product pricing and uh, order fulfillment and all those sorts of things. Those don't really map to the front end and they probably belong in an administrative area. Same with menu items. Um, I know they want to be able to add a quick menu item. Well, maybe there's some simple types you can add there, but there's a lot that goes on with a menu as far as, in Joomla at least, as far as what modules go to that menu. Where are they positioned? And, and certain details like that. And uh, then there are obviously the administrative things such as setting up the ACL, setting up the users, and um, the users' pa password and things like that. Those things don't work quite as well on the front end especially like the ACL, um, that you probably need a back end or some kind of an administrative screen. So focus on, if we're doing front end editing, it's, it works a lot if we can focus on the items that matches the user's mental model of the website. 
Okay, the ACL and permissions. And the idea is if we have front end editing of modules, we have to have permissions because we have to have a way to say this person is able to um, edit this item but not that item. Or if they edit it, what features do they, are they enabled to edit? So we have to have permissions if we offer front end editing. Here's my model again of the ACL. Uh, and you notice that it's only components that, um, that offer permissions, modules do not. This is the ACL structure, in my opinion. Uh, it manages all the groups, it manages all access, but all it does is able to say, I can take a permission and I can say whether or not a person has permissions. But as far as implementing those permissions, as far as saying what set of permissions am I going to offer, or actions, we, they would call it, and uh, if this person has permission to do this action, what do I allow? That belongs in the component. The ACL doesn't know what actions are needed by each component. It can only say whether or not you have permissions for that, and it's up to the component to enforce it. So when we go to modules, modules need to do the same thing. They need to define what are the actions that they're going to offer, and then need to define and implement what it means if you are allowed to perform this particular action. And there you go with the components, and you see how it's all set up with permissions there. So what does it mean if a module has permissions or has it's an ACL attached to it? Well, there's a level at the module manager. Um, there's also a level where do we put it on the type of the module or do we put it on the instance of the module? These are things we have to think through. The module manager is a little outside of my, my scope right now, but I do need to talk on, mention it. Uh, if right now with module managers, you can set an option on the component module manager to say whether or not a person can get in and edit modules. Once they can get in, all the modules are there. There's no way to refine it to a small set. I'm working on the problem. Um, I'm not quite done with this, but I've took module manager using object-oriented programming. I've created one in module manager extended using the same functionality of module manager, but extending it, in this case, adding a column. If you click on the column, you'll see a list of all the groups. You can check which groups are able to access that particular item. Um, I've got most of it in, in place, except I don't have the, all the, the full editing within the, this extended um, working. But that means if you give somebody only has one or two modules they need to edit in the back end, the full details of that module, but they don't, you don't want them to see the other modules, you can use a tool like this to say, this person can see only these modules and none of the others. That's one way of using permissions on modules. Another way is uh, there's by type and by title, or actually by instance. So we have three modules here, all of them of the same type, three different instances, and these can be different. They can have different positions, they can be assigned to different pages, they have different access levels, also uh, assigned to different languages. And so these are different from that. So how do we make it different? Here, when you look at the user's view, they see the instances of the module, not the type. These two of these could be the same type. It doesn't matter to the user, they're by instance. So if we apply permissions on modules, I think it's better to put them on the instance. Here we've got the different groups, and we, you know we assign users to groups, components, or some resources. Uh, we'll assign actions. The basic component is configure. Can you access the administrative interface? Can you create, delete, edit, edit state, or even edit your own? Those make sense for components which manages pieces of information. And then what we do is we come to a screen like this where you've got your groups, you've got your different actions, and here's where, here's where we actually set the permissions on that combination. For this group, here's the different actions, what's allowed, what isn't, et cetera, et cetera. So for me, I've, I've done my uh, way I've put it together is I have the module manager who can edit which modules. That's the way I would use permissions that way. On the module type, that's where I define those actions instead of create edit, delete, edit state, I might put things like filtering, grouping, uh, some content details, things like that. I'll make those different actions. And then the module instance, that's where I'm actually setting the permissions. Um, then how, do, how are our modules different? Well, the main thing is components write their information to the database. Usually a component has a table in the database that's dedicated to that component where you create different, you put the different pieces of data but you don't have tables connected to the modules. They actually all belong in one module table. This module has an entry, that module has an entry. There's a lot of difference there. And so components are manage content. Modules manage the display of that particular content. 
It also means when we come to actions, we have to think differently as far as what actions we're going to do. What does it mean to edit a module as opposed to editing a component? Component, you can change all the text and all these details there. A module, we're probably just changing the display and some of the settings on it because it's already grabbing its data from the data. The, mod, the display is grabbing the data, but the module is not managing the data or the content itself. And you might say, well, wait a minute. We have display on uh, component areas, but really it's the menu item that controls the display of the data, whereas the component controls the data itself. And so a menu item is almost like a, uh, a module. It's, just, it's more about display and where it belongs. So if the component has these different actions, when we add permissions on a module, we need to rethink what those actions are, create, delete, uh, edit own don't make a whole lot of sense. We want to maybe things like filtering settings or display settings, link settings. And each module might be different. I will have these slides up on the uh, internet later, so uh, if you, you know, you'll be able to see all these things. I'm going rather fast, I know. Uh, but this is, uh, we have to rethink of what actions we want for modules. So actions and module settings. Um, remember, the users are viewing this from their mental model, visual model of the website. And so we need to come up with actions that make sense in that frame of mind. So when we sh do have a module that we want to have edit, we're only going to show a few things. We don't need to show that long list of things that we have in the back end, because these are people who are just trying to change a few things from the front end. They aren't trying to worry about their position and their state, that sort of thing. So the whole trick is we've got to come up with the actions and then for all the module settings, which ones of these belong to which action? Um, this is a quick, I'm just going to quickly go through this as like a little philosophy. I've done some studying trying to figure this out because it's an art, it's not a hard science as this. Um, I looked at all the different modules and module types, and I say I really can break these module types into four different areas. The first one is a list of items where we have upcoming events, and we might have a blog RSS feed. And we might have a slideshow and a showcase that has different items that rotate through. These are a list of items. And then we have single items. It could be a banner. It could be breadcrumbs. It could be the menu, the, the logo, or a header image. Each could have its own um, module that ties into only one particular item. We have functional modules, which like the search engine, the search box, the, uh, the login box, and language switchers, or social media buttons that provide links to different places. And then, of course, we have the custom HTML, which is more of a content-based module, which is, it doesn't store its data in any of the table except the module record that it, that it uh, keeps all the other module information. So it doesn't store it like an article. It stores it in the module itself. But it's still another type. So those are the four types. And then you can look at the different fields. This is the article categories. Uh, back end, you see they've got filtering, ordering, grouping, display, that sort of thing. Just quickly walk through these. I do want to make a comment about uh, the first one, which is the details and the menu assignment. I consider these more about modules ex existence. In other words, what position it's in, the status, is it published, not published, start and finish publishing, and the menu assignments. And the problem with these is if you change them in the front end, they might go away. And if they go away, there's no way to get back and edit those. So my view is you shouldn't be putting any of these things on front end editing. Because if you do, you can cause problems in this person. What do I do? I, I've changed the module position. It's still there somewhere in the site, but it's not where you're, it's no longer on that page or in the same place on that particular page. Filtering can lead to the same problem, whereas you change the date range, all of a sudden there's no data, and some modules just do not display. And then I found a little trick that I'm working with that at least buffers against that problem. But filtering is things like categories, category depth, the author, the date ranges. Um, you've got basic display. And this is the display of when you show an item, what parts of the item you're going to show, the date, uh, the category hits, author. Are you going to have intro text or not? Uh, and then also the formatting, like the header level, the date formatting. There's those sorts of things. I would also consider ordering of a list would be part of the formatting. Uh, functional ones, such as the titles, are they going to be linked? Are we going to show a read more button? And then like in the login module, you've got things like the login redirection for, or log out redirection and whether you encrypt the form. These are values. Do they have value in the front end editing? They might. And there's things to consider. Do we want to include those? 
when we, when we design a module for permissions, do we include these as an action? And then there, of course, is the basic content, um, which we've, we all know. But and then actually in the uh, custom HTML uh, module, you actually get an extra tab up there for working with the content. But there are other types of content that can go into a module as well. The search box, we'll talk about the label or the, the, bo the text that goes inside that little circle that says search. Do you want to have a button and does it have text on it? The login will have pretext and post text. And I've seen other modules that have a, a lead in or a trailing sort of comment. So you can put those in modules, which is actually applying content. And if you know something about the XML files in uh, modules, you actually can create extra fields that have content and just use the override the layout and put that content in it yourself. So there's a lot of things you could do with content. It just isn't tied to the original article, or the original items content in its table. Advanced. Um, this has this could work uh, alternative layout. Imagine if you could actually change the alternative layout from the front end. So this is my normal call out, but on holidays I want to use my Christmas one has green and and red sort of coloring to it or something like that. And you just have them change the layout. You might be able to have them do it also with the class module suffix. Um, but then there's a problem is they have to know exactly type the right one in. If they change something that's wrong, it can break the whole system. So this one I would use with caution. This one has a lot more value. These, um, I don't see it in the back end right now how I would change those. And I don't know if I'd want to change those, but it's something that will be looked at. Do we want to make those ever available on the front end? It's a, like I say, it's an art, not a science. It's different people have different opinions. Here's the list of all the different fields on the article categories module. Uh, broken down by the way they break it, filtering, display, ordering, whatever. And the trick is, is if you're providing this for a client, whether you're the module developer or whether the imp implementer, you have to decide which of these do you want to make available on the front end. And if you're using a role-based access uh, levels, do you have um, certain ones belong to this role and certain ones belong to that role? You have to decide it, and it's probably for each client. So there's, again, there's an art to all this. It's not simple. There's the, here's an example of just some actions you can use. You know, the manage the filtering. Notice instead of really edit, create, delete, it's more about managing, managing these settings. So we were shooting for something like this. When we, uh, in the back end, we could say, well, allow front end editing for this, in, for this particular group. Do we allow or do deny it? And then here's the different fields we're going to show. And if you have multiple people in multiple roles, now you've got to create di multiple actions. And each action is assigned to certain different um, settings. And so depending on what group one belongs to, they see something like this or they see something like that. And it's all about matching the user's front end um, model, the model of the front end. OK, how do we implement? Like I said, I thought I'd be able to come up and give you just a short little bit of code, just do this and that. And I do have some short little bit of code that you would do for implementing, but it didn't have to tie into a library that I worked to get around all these things that Joomla is not really providing us the opportunity to put permissions, not directly providing us the opportunity to manage the permissions on modules. So there's three things. Basically install the, the parts that I'm putting together. Um, you have to do edit the uh, module's XML file and override uh, a layout file in order to make this work. If you're a developer, of course, you can go ahead and put some of this information in yourself, and all the person has to do is make sure this is installed, and the module itself will automatically work. You don't have to inject it. I don't like changing the XML file because if somebody updates the uh, module, it will override the XML file, and so you almost have to keep a copy to the side. Um, I am thinking of in extending this whole project so that it might have a little tool to go ahead and know in a database what fields you need to add to the XML. So if the XML gets updated, you just refresh and it'll put all the information back in there. That'd be as simple I think, as, it, as it could be. Um, so you install, I basically have a component, two plugins, and a new library file that needs to run and do all this sort of work. Um, what you do, edit the XML files, you go to the modules, whatever module it is you're trying to modify. Um, I'm thinking also when I put this out, I'll be having a lot of these already, you know, pre-built XML files and layout files that you don't have to edit yourself. But any customized or, or third-party ones, you can do uh, this pattern here. So you go to the mod, you XML file, which has the same name as the module. And you go in there, you need to add this field set. And I would have all the documentation showing that. The things you need to change is that you have to make sure the section says component. Remember, Joomla assumes only components are going to have permissions. 
Um, and then you've got to give the name of the component, which is really a module in this case. I just go mod underscore articles latest, which is the name of the module I'm in. And then for each action, you create a little bit, a little thing like this. And for me, I'm using by default mod.fi for front end editing. And I'm just using regular English text right here. You'd probably want to put a language. Um, I'll have a language tag in there where you can be multilingual. And in this case, I have two actions. I could have 10 actions. I could have one action, however many actions you want. And so you need the name, the title, and the description. That's on the uh, XML. So you add the, you, you add, let me go back. Oops. OK. This, yes, you add the rules, and then you go to the different fields. And for every field you want to add in there, you add a new attribute. Or it's actually an attribute that exists already called label class. And if, it's, if the uh, rule is core.edit, you say core hyphen edit. And you can have multiple classes in there. And that means when we're offering up different fields that are available for front end editing, as long as it finds a match there with the action that we've created before, that field is going to be imported. So this is the way you'd be selecting the fields to go with each action. Then you want to override the modules layout, modules, modules, and this, again the slides will be uh, posted. And you want to put it over. You want to over, you want to override it by copying it, put it under the HTML of your um, template, put it there. And a the simple thing: im, j import iq dot dot module, which is a library file that I, I'll be providing, and then you fee module colon colon insert, and you pass two parameters that every module has available to it, dollar sign module, dollar sign params. At the end, we need to close it off and have fee module colon colon close, dollar sign module. What this does is inserts the edit box, and also the logic to say, should I even put an edit box here? Should I even put an edit little button in there? All that's managed by just putting this little bit of code in there. Do you have a question? OK. Um, then again, when you go back in to edit the module, you're basically done installing it. You go to edit the module. And you now have got an extra permissions tab here, all your different groups. You've got your different actions you've created. And for any group, you can go in and set allowed, inherit, deny, sort of a thing. And then you end up with something like this in the front end. If you log in and this person has access to this module, this module, and this module, they have the buttons. They click on the button. A little dialog box pops up showing the fields that you have set for that actions that this person has permission for. OK, that's how to implement. Um, so again, if you want to get access to the code, iqproject.com, sign up for that. I will send you information on the progress of this. And when it's available, I hope to have it done um, sometime in June. I did most of this work in May, getting ready for this preparation here. So I'm not too far away. Um, I probably will need some beta testers. So that's something there. The demo. So I want, I want to shift over and use the demo now. Do I do, do you need to do anything different here? Yeah. Okay, I just need to. Uh, I'll be leaving PowerPoint, so it's not going to record the PowerPoint. Okay. Yes. Yes. Ajax. That's why the one of the components is there. Um, there are some issues when you want to refresh a page that includes um, JCE editor. JCE editor has to be reinstalled, restarted up again. So there's a few things you'll, I've learned. And I, I'm sure there's a couple other things that out there that I haven't really tested yet that I'm going to have to make a few changes on. Um, bear with me here. I guess the best thing to, for me to do is exit out of this. OK. Let me just, I can't do this one remotely. So here's, here's a, a, a front end a page, a demo I've got in my local host. Have you done this for Joomla 3? I've done it for Joomla 3. I've yet, to, I mean, I just put this together to get it all this extra work, and I didn't have time to, to do a test and make sure I can get it working for 2.5. I'd like to go for 2.5, but if I have to draw a line, I'm going to draw a line, say 3.0 going forward. No. Okay. Okay. And they included drag and drop functionality. Okay. So you have the width. It's more simplicated because there is no HTML behind. Mm -hmm. But um, you have kind of overview of all your module positions, and you can drag and drop. Uh, Mod module. Yes. 
good position, then the, the window opens, it's covered, and you can um, manage the whole module. Okay. And, and, the, and, the, and there's different views on way to manage modules. And so what I think what I'm hearing you saying and what I'm demonstrating is I'm not trying to make it so you can move modules around. That's, to me, that's, a, that, that's, has a, that's a valid reason. Also, when you edit it, I'm not giving people the full edit because if you have this common person runs a restaurant, they only want to change a couple. So I'm saying part of this is like exploring. We're all pioneers. We're trying different ways. And my, this is my view is... Just give them a few things of what they want, give them the ability to assign permissions. But no, I mean, so I mean, I, I just pointed out that there's different approaches, and somebody else come here and give a third approach. Okay, let me go on and give a quick demo. Well, my customers want to do, uh, include a module with where they can place some text. Oh, I understand. Like no, I, I certainly understand that. And that's one thing I wasn't trying to address with this particular thing. Again, I was mostly working at trying to um, say, if you do put me, uh, permissions on modules, what would it be like? And I thought it'd be really simple to show. So I logged in as super administrator, and because I'm super administrator, I get access to everything. You notice I put module editing on all these types of modules, search boxes, whatever. So I'll go quick. So there I just click on it, and category, there's five items. I'm going to change it down to three items. And there it goes to three. Let's say I want to um, show the date. Now the date's being shown. This is all using Ajax sort of thing changes. Um, and I, I can go through, and I mean, show an awful lot of things, the date range. I can change the category of items. Let me close this. And we're running short of time, so I, I won't give you the f everything that I get to show, but you, you get the idea how this works. Here's the same thing with count. Do I want to show featured articles? I'm showing it. Let's say I don't. And now there's less items because I'm not showing those. Um, I think more. I also have a, the dialogues box stay up. It, so you can have multiple at one time. I don't know if that's good or not, but uh, I have to test that. Um, then here's the cu custom HTML. Um, actually, I'm in a particular, I'm in a, there's actually two custom HTMLs in here. And uh, Joomla Rocks uh, makes, makes our life easier. I didn't bring my mouse. So. And there it is, it changes it right on to the, the content that I can. Um, I can insert photos in here as well. And let me get, switch to a different page. Here is uh, this, a content module, basically the same thing I had before, but it's actually a different instance of it. So when I change one instance, I didn't change the other one. And as you know, I mean, I, I can go ahead and add photos, that sort of thing, and it adds it in real time. Let me just. And I can have different people get in here, and they'll see different edit screens based upon their rights and privileges. And I'm like I said, I'm running short on time, so I'm not going to um, show all those particular details. What about search? I'm just, just think, what would you do here? And I have to, okay, get the edit box off to the side. Um, box text, um, help me. Um, I don't have the button, but I'm going to turn on the button, and the button text will be, let's try it. Did I change, I, I oh, I switched it off, okay, thank you. Search button, yes. And there it is. And you can actually change the button position. I mean, these are all settings in the module, but I'm bringing them forward to the very front end. Um, login form. Um, right now, I've got it so it's redirecting to uh, the, the fish page and on the, on the login and uh, redirecting to the log dogs on that. I can change this drop down so when I log out, it goes to the home page, which I think I'm on now, so I probably need to. Over there. 
Okay, and if I want to log out, I should take me to the home page. Should, but apparently I didn't set, make the setting quite right. Oh, it is. You can see the, I can see the URL to the home page just leaves the, the content I was on. Um, so in, in respect for uh, the tight, tight deadline we have here, um, I've given you a quick demo on what we can do with front end editing, how it looks, talking about the philosophy of it all. Um, I could go ahead and show edit how you can ed edit the breadcrumbs and what things you could do with that. You just got to use your imagination. Again, it's an art, not a science. There's all these different options. Which ones do we want to make available? Um, I, I will be, go ahead and sign up if you're interested. If you've got a business card or just your name and a piece, uh, an email address, you'd like to be contacted when this is ready for you to go ahead and try, feel free to hand it to me. Um, I will probably be looking for some people to help me out on beta testing. Um, that's pretty much it for the modules with permissions. Are there any questions? Yes. Not too heavy. Well, that's that is the issue that um, I'm thinking of more for the integrators that you decide that you want to put this in. If you are module developer, then you'll need to include this package or look at the code and try to make emulate your own and do it all yourself. It's one file in the library. It's only about so long. I mean, that if that makes sense, it's not like this, but it's not like several pages. And the component is very lightweight. It just handles the AJAX. So it basically all it has right now is a controller in it that basically handles the response. I've heard about, I read about that recently last week or two uh, that they're talking about that. Maybe you could use something like that. And uh, I have a back end one for managing them, which modules you can see. I might just merge those two. But the component is very lightweight. I just needed a component to handle the AJAX. And the two plugins handle the things that the Joomla core didn't allow, which is like if I want to show um, the different permissions and let people set the permissions and pull the permissions from the asset table, the core didn't have any functionality that would do that. It just assumed it would only be a component. And do so the plugins work on both recording and retrieving that information from the asset table. So they aren't that heavyweight. You can get to download and give it a look. Yes? Part of it requires me as an integrator to um, put that XML file in there either get it from you want to download or create my own. Well, yes, you could take the XML file that's there already and just modify it. But I plan on having some, my own, I'll modify them, the initial ones if people wanted to get them out of the box, and then you go from there. Why did you consider, um, rather than having to explicitly state them, take all the entries in the existing XML file and allowing the system to individually create, put those into action? Very good point. Uh, no, I did not think, I mean, I started out thinking that I can easily edit these and it would be maintained. And then I realized that the, mod the module manager actually explicitly knows a one place you can go. I can't even override the XML file with a component. I know how to grab a different one. Um, so I didn't, no, that's what I'm, as I'm working on these, that's a great idea. Maybe I should have in, in the injection of, of uh, something, another setting. Well, the way I one possible route to go forward from that take to the next level would be, by default, it lets you control the actions on every available parameter. Yes. If you, by, just by default, if you now want to make it more fine-grained and group them like the way you have, yes. you have a component to say, create custom rule set, which will then copy the existing XML, apply the different changes, whatever changes are needed, right. put it in the HTML override file of the active template, mm -hmm and then allow you to edit it in your component. So basically, you get individual records that create exceptions from your default, which is allow an action for every parameter. I think that's really good. Um, I've got to think through that, because I mean, what happens is the mo here's, a one, here's the one problem with it, but it still can be worked around. The module manager pulls in that XML file from the module. And there's only one place, pulling this code, display. I mean, it doesn't even have places for the plugins to fire. And that creates, so I mean, it's like, if I want to make it module manager where you've got your permissions, that might maybe you can't do that. But maybe we have the standalone component can do it. So I mean, this is this is like I said, it's new ground. It's pioneering and getting uh, different ideas. What's the best way to implement this? Yeah, the um, here, which I think is great, is the permissions set. Because as someone said, front end management for modules have been around for a while. Yeah. But being able to control the permissions is a big step. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anything else? 
Okay, well, we're running, we know we're running short on time, so thank you for your attention. And uh, talk to me offline if you uh, have more questions. Thank you.